warm welcome to TV Africa News and thank you for always joining us. This is Africa Today. My name is Najma Loima, but first are the headlines. Over 21,000 people to get COVID-19 cash. Uganda to produce vaccines. South African Regional Court to rule whether to block order for Zuma's arrest. And in sports, Mutiaba commits herself to URA Football Club until 2024. A warm welcome once again. Now the news in detail. President Museveni yesterday commissioned biological drugs and messenger regonucleic acid vaccine facility in Matuga, Wakiso district that will make vaccines readily available in the country. We have more with our reporter Kachanchu. According to Ms. Linda Nabsai, the presidential press secretary, the facility is under the Day Group, a factory that deals in pharmaceuticals, research and value addition on produce. The president was in company of Dr. William Ruto, the deputy president of Kenya, Dr. Jonas Tegega Waldamarian, the World Health Organization country representative and an advisor at Food and Drug Administration, Professor Safaraz Niaz, among others. Dr. Monica Msenero, the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, who is also a senior presidential advisor, said the facility is a private initiative which will manufacture modern vaccines. According to experts, mRNA vaccines don't use live virus to trigger an immune response but instead teach the cells how to make protein that will trigger an immune response. Dr. Msenro yesterday said if all goes well, the country should start manufacturing the vaccines in six months. Moving on, a total of 21,480 vulnerable people from cities and municipalities are expected tomorrow to receive shillings of 100,000 each as the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development rolls out the COVID-19 cash relief. We have more. The Gender Minister Betty Amongi told journalists in Kampala yesterday that money will be sent to the vulnerable families after uploading data of at least half of the 250,553 targeted beneficiaries. The planned government cash release, however, covers only 4.2% of the targeted beneficiaries. Data of 479,627 beneficiaries is yet to be verified and uploaded on the system for payment. The basis of payment is the availability of data supposed to be received from cities and municipalities. The COVID-19 cash release will come exactly 21 days after the president imposed a 42-day lockdown to curb the spread of a pandemic that has so far killed more than 1,000 people. About three weeks ago, the government promised to send cash relief to a total of 501 1,007 vulnerable people from selected urban areas. Mr. Chivenge explained that the funds were going to be deposited from the Bank of Uganda to Post Bank before the planned beneficiaries get their money. Post Bank is expected to disperse the money to the cleared beneficiaries' mobile phones. He said the system will only automatically clear those whose national identification numbers match with their names and mobile phones and post back will send the money directly. Beneficiaries whose names and mobile phones accounts do not match with their name will access the funds from post bank using their national IDs. Those without IDs have been advised to go to National Identification and Registration Authority and get NINs. Let's take a very quick short break. We will be right back. <music>
Welcome back. You're still watching TV African News, The Right to Know. Egypt said on Monday that it had been informed by Ethiopia of the start of the second phase of filling a mega dam on the Nile, a move denounced by Cairo and likely to raise attentions ahead of a United Nations Security Council meeting on Thursday. We are more. According to a statement from his ministry released late on Monday, the Egyptian Minister of Irrigation, Abdel Ati, said that he was informed by Addis Ababa of the start of the second phase of filling, which unilateral measure firmly reject. He added that the start of this second phase of the filling of the dam represents a violation of the international laws and norms that regulate construction projects on shared basins of international rivers. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, built by Ethiopian upstream on the Nile, has long been the subject of a dispute with Egypt and Sudan, which fear for their water resources. The UN Security Council is due to meet on Thursday to discuss the matter at the request of Tunisia, a non-permanent member of the Council and representative of the Arab world, on behalf of Egypt and Sudan. Ethiopia is opposed to this meeting but is also expected to participate. In recent weeks, Sudan and Egypt had sent letters to the UN requesting an emergency referral to the Security Council. Away from that, as scientists in Kenya are on a quest to save the northern white rhinoceros, one of two subspecies of white rhino on the brink of extinction after the death of the last male named Sudan in 2018. Let's take a look. Richard Vin, the managing director of OI Pejita Conservancy, say that they are confident about saving the species using nine embryos obtained from eggs harvested from two surviving females and frozen sperm from deceased males. Next stage is to work out how to take those embryos, which are northern white rhino embryos, <clears throat> and to put them into a surrogate southern white rhino female. Now it has to be a it has to be a southern white rhino female because there are no northern white rhino females that can carry those embryos to make a calf. Uh, nobody has really dreamed of so much fast progress in the beginning and uh, these embryos really represent new life and uh, if the transfer in the, in the surrogates in mothers, uh, potential mothers with a nice life and lively environment uh, here in Kenya, uh, that we are quite confident that this will be successful and we can demonstrate to the world that this ambitious project uh, is successful. He said that the next stage is to work out how to take those embryos, which are northern white rhino embryos, and to put them into a surrogate southern white rhino female. Thomas Hilde Brandt, who works at the Lainis Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research and a Bayeris Key Project leader, appears happy with the progress thus far. They'll repeat the process multiple times to eventually have enough live rhinos to breed naturally amongst each and gradually recover the population which has dwindled mainly due to the effects of climate change and poaching. Moving on, Interpol has issued an arrest warrant for Karim Keita, the eldest son of former President Ibrahim Bombaka Keita, who was overthrown in 2020 by a coup. The red notice was issued at the request of Malian authorities who have been investigating Keita in a case concerning the disappearance of a journalist in 2016. We have more. The investigation on Karim Keita, the eldest son of former President Ibrahim Bobeka Keita, concerns the disappearance of a 50-year-old investigative journalist, Birama Ture, who worked for the Bamako Weekly, Les Pensee. He has not been seen since January 29, 2016, according to his family and the publication's director, Adama Drame, and is feared that he was abducted, tortured, and killed after several months in detention. The director of Les Sphinx had claimed in 2018 that his ex-reporter had previously approached Karim Keita about a file he presented as compromising for the president's son. 
Believing he had been defamed by the investigative journalist, Karim had filed a defamation complaint in 2019 against the director of the magazine and against journalists from a private radio station in Bamako. Moving on, this Friday, a South African regional court will rule on whether it will block an order by the country's top court for the arrest of former South African president Jacob Zuma. According to Zuma's lawyers in the Piet Maris Abag High Court hearing on Tuesday. The letter says the court should stop the order made by the Constitutional Court last week asking the police must arrest Zuma by midnight on Wednesday. Jacob Zuma's lawyers argued that the court should stop the police from arresting him until the Constitutional Court rules on his application to rescind the sentence. Uh, next Monday, and these other parties nevertheless forged ahead uh, to come to this court and, and make a, a, a non-existent case, then a lordship will leave it to your lordship's hands to indicate its appropriate uh, appropriate. We are dealing with a repetitive, recalcitrant lawbreaker in the form of Mr. Zuma. He has now come to ask you to assist him in breaking the law further. You should reject that. So, Your Lordship, we respectfully ask you to dismiss the application and order Mr. Zuma to pay costs. The case will be heard on Monday, July 12th. In an opposing argument, Tembeke, who represented the Zondo Commission, said Zuma was already in defense of the court order by not turning himself over the authorities. Zuma, who is 79, was found guilty of contact after he failed to obey the court's order to appear before the Zondo Commission, probing accusations of corruption when he served as president between 2009 and 2018. Over the weekend, hundreds of Zuma supporters had gathered outside his rural home in Kandla in KwaZulu, NATO. They vowed to prevent any attempts to arrest him. Zuma told the news conference on Sunday that sending him to jail during the pandemic and at his age was the same as sentencing him to death. Let's take a very quick short break. Once again, we will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching TV Africa News. The right to know. In our business news today, Egypt has finally decided to free the giant container ship ever given that blocked the Suez Canal in March, more than three months after the incident occurred, which has ended months of arrest of the ship by the Economic Court of Ismailia. We are the Suez Canal Authority plans to hold a ceremony in Ismailia, where its headquarters are located on Wednesday, to celebrate the signing of the agreement and the departure of the ship. The decision follows the signing of an agreement between Egyptian maritime authorities and the Japanese owner of the ship, Shui Kisen Kaisha. The latter agreed to compensate Egyptian authorities on Sunday, although details of the amount was not made public, after several weeks of negotiations, Cairo had initially claimed 916 million US dollars as compensation before revising its claims downwards to 600 and then 550 million US dollars. In addition to the compensation, President of the Suez Canal Authority, Osama Rabi, said on Sunday that Egypt would receive a tugboat with a capacity of 75 tons from the owner of the Ever Given. Bagheri. 
In our health and news today, South Africa's government has begun vaccinating the nation's police officers with Johnson and Johnson injections as part of the second phase of its coronavirus vaccination campaign in Wetenga province at the Oladu Stadium in Soweto, the epicenter of the country's devastating third wave. Natasha Govenda, a sergeant in the Eldorado Park police station, said that their station in Eldorado Park has closed on many occasions due to members testing positive, losing many colleagues along the way. Um, our station, Eldorado Park, is closed on many occasions due to members testing positive. Please, 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 we have lost please, colleagues please. along the way. Um, all our members have tested positive and that fear of going for testing, that anxiety of waiting for your results, it really did traumatize me. Yes. South Africa, the continent's worst hit country, posted that it has seen record numbers of new daily infections brought on by the Delta variant of the coronavirus with over 2 million confirmed cases and around 61,000 deaths. Russia on Sunday counted more than 25,000 new daily infections after a week of record death tolls as highly contagious Delta variant propels. It's going to make a big difference. I mean, we're always in contact with people. We're working with different kinds of people on a daily basis, of which some we don't know uh, the status and all that, you see. So for us to be protected, it's a big bonus for us. And I a global resurgency of the pandemic. The coronavirus has killed nearly 4 million people worldwide, forcing numerous nations to reimpose restrictions well over a year after the outbreak of the pandemic. Sports news today, midfielder Julius Motiawa has penned a contract extension at Uganda Revenue Authority Football Club. Motiawa's new deal will see him serve the tax collectors for at least another three seasons. Our reporter Katende has more. Midfielder Julius Mutiava's contract ran down at the end of June 2021 and the negotiations for a new deal were successful. Mutiaba has been part of the Uganda Revenue Authority's team for the past four years since leaving Lueza Football Club. He remains one of the most committed players at the Uganda Revenue Authority, orchestrating the midfield department diligently with timely tackles and perfect ball distribution. Mutiaba is also a team player and awesome commander once on the field of play. Uganda Revenue Authority is plotting for the start of the new season where they will represent Uganda at the CAF Confederation Cup. The club is also finalizing on the head coach slot where Sam Simba is tipped for a new contract upon agreement of working terms. URAFC has already poached Geoffrey Waswa and Derek Indahiro from sports club Villa, Jude Semgabi from Umbara City, as well as on Paracas Talishman, living Carbon, among others. Now, before we end our news bulletin today, let's do take a recap of our top stories. Over 21,000 people to get COVID-19 cash. Uganda to produce vaccines. South African Regional Court to rule whether to block order for Zuma's arrest. And in sports, Mutiaba commits herself to URA Football Club until 2024. That was the news. Thank you for always keeping it TV Africa. Please do stay tuned. I'm more programming coming your way. This is Africa. And that was the news.